Hi there. In this business topic video, we're going to take a look at the two main methods of calculating depreciation. Now, depreciation is an accounting term and it's a cost in the accounts of a business, but the cost itself represents just the estimate of the fall in value of fixed assets over time. So depreciation doesn't actually involve a cash flow, but it's actually an estimate of the fall in value. So let's take a look at uh, what do we mean by depreciation and then just uh, briefly introduce the two main methods by which it is calculated by the accountants. Here's a simple example. Let's say that the CEO of a company buys a company car for his or her use and buys it for £40,000 and then spends the next three years driving the car for business use, of course. And three years later, that car is worth £25,000 on the market. What is the depreciation? Well, it should be reasonably obvious that there has been a fall in value of that fixed asset owned by the company. They bought it. The original cost was £40,000. But after three years, it's only worth £25,000. So there's been a fall in value over the three years of £15,000. <clears> and if that was reflected each year as a, as a cost, if the cost was the falling value spread over those three years, that would be around about £5,000 per year in reduced value of the assets. And that's what would go in as the depreciation cost in the, in, in the income statement. So how do you go about calculating uh, depreciation? Well, there are essentially two main methods. Let's have a look briefly at both. One is called the straight line method. Uh, actually pretty pretty common, pretty popular, very, very easy to calculate. And the other one is called the reducing balance method. Uh, straight line is uh, calculated by taking the original cost of the asset and just making an allowance for what's known as the residual value. So what you might be able to sell the asset for at the end of its useful life. And you divide the asset, you sorry, you divide that number by the estimated useful life of the asset to get a straight line or consistent depreciation charge for each year. The reducing balance is a slightly different method. What you do is you take the original cost, apply a depreciation rate, a percentage, that calculates the depreciation. You take that off the cost at the end of each year and then apply the same rate to the to the reduced net book value. Sounds a bit complicated. It'll be easy to explain as we just show you a simple example of both of those two uh, methods shown on the screen there. So let's uh, let's use the same example uh, in terms of uh, an investment to fix asset just to show the two methods. Business A has bought a new packaging machine. It looks looks like a good machine. Fifty thousand pounds is the cost, and they expect this to last five years. After which they think it will be worth £10,000, maybe as a used machine to sell it to another buyer. So £50,000 is the original cost. It's going to last five years. So the reducing balance would probably apply a 20% depreciation rate to it. Uh, straight line, slightly different calculation. But we need to take account of the fact it will be worth £10,000 in five years time. So let's have a look first of all at the straight line depreciation method. Remember it's cost, less residual value. And then divide, divide that by the estimated useful life in years to give us the annual depreciation charge. So for the packaging machine, it's cost of £50,000 less, £10,000 residual value. We're going to divide that by the useful life, which is five years. And if you work the numbers, it's quite simple. It's 40000 That's 50 less 10 divided by five years. So we would depreciate that asset by £8,000 per year. That will be the depreciation cost in the income statement each year for that asset and that takes account of the fact that uh, over those over those years uh, that uh, that machine as it gets used will fall in value the reducing balance method uh, is not far off it's quite a similar number but a slightly different approach therefore a slightly different depreciation number reducing balance we apply a depreciation rate we said this was going to be 20 percent so let's see what happens we start with a cost of 50 and in the first year, we apply 20% depreciation to that, which is £10,000. So the depreciation cost in year one will be £10,000, which, of course, is higher than the £8,000 on a straight line basis. Year two, though, the number starts to come down because we've only got a net book value of 40, which is the 50 less the accumulated depreciation of 10. So we only apply 20% to £40,000 net book value, which gives us a depreciation charge of £8,000. The following year... We apply our 
<coughs> depreciation charge to a lower number of £32,000 and the depreciation charge is falling. So you can see that the depreciation charge on a reducing balance basis is higher than a straight line basis in the first year but as, uh, as the years go by it is lower than the, the straight line basis. Both approaches are perfectly valid. Don't forget the important thing about depreciation is that it's just an estimate. It's an accounting estimate of the fall in value of a fixed asset over time. It's a subjective judgment and therefore not a true cash flow. So that's been a brief introduction to the two main methods of calculating depreciation.